Hi, Ray here. I'm glad you could join me. In today's video, I'm going to illustrate how I created an overhead camera rig for my video reviews and demos. This is a relatively economic way to create an overhead rig and I'll quote prices for the components that I used. Of course, there's no way I can guarantee the prices quoted here and I have no affiliation at all with any of the brands I'll mention along the way. They're just the items that I chose based on past experience and search engine queries and a few YouTube videos. First, there are dedicated overhead rigs on the market. Some very nice ones. Glidegear, for instance, the manufacturer of my teleprompter, makes a nice one at a reasonable price, around $200 US for the bare bones stand. And it gets good reviews. And I could certainly put my DIY skills to use in building something serviceable. But my reason for the approach I'll show here is threefold. One, I don't have room to store another piece of kit I don't use every day. <laughs> Look at the mess in here. Two, I wanted something that I can put to other uses in the studio. And lastly, I don't have time right now to build something. So while this is the cheapest approach, I think all in all, it makes sense economically when you consider its versatility. The core of the rig is the C-stand. And as I said, I wanted something versatile. So when it's not pressed into use for this rig, a C-stand obviously has other uses in a studio. I can easily adjust this over the table or wheel it out of the way when I don't need it. This is the big C-stand from Strobe Pro for $189.95 Canadian. That's just $150 US. You can add a mini roller stand too for $109.95 Canadian or, as I did, the Strobe Pro C-Stand wheel caster set, 30 millimeters, for $59.95 Canadian. The height adjusts from 57 to 127 inches or 145 centimeters to 323 centimeters. It weighs 24 pounds or 11 kilos. And the moon length is 50 inches or 127 centimeters. They also have the mini C-stand with boom, uh, slightly less expensive at $179.95 Canadian. That's $140 US. The maximum height of that is 161 centimeters or 63.4 inches. And it weighs 7.2 kilos or 16 pounds. The boom length is 50.8 centimeters or 20 inches. I did actually use the mini stand for the first iteration, but as I said, the boom arm is just 20 inches. So that kind of has me cramped up on the side of the table. Since then, I have bought a spare 50 inch arm that came with two knuckles and a note on that boom from Niwar. It cost $82 Canadian or $63 US. That's more than half the price of the big C stand, complete with a 50 inch boom and two knuckles. And the, the Niwer knuckles are not quite as, uh, they're not quite up to the standard uh, of those from Strobe Pro. I mean, they're serviceable, but the, the Strobe Pro knuckles, uh, the finishing is smoother, it's kind of nicer, and the handles are much more comfortable. Again, <laughs> no one's paying me in any way to say this, but the guys from Strobe Pro are great to deal with as well. Now, you'll see, you'll see some people uh, suggesting that you brace between the C-stand and the boom arm. With uh, an extra boom arm and a knuckle or whatever. But this just restricts what you can then put on the boom arm. And as you can see, I've got uh, here a light. This is a Amaran panel from Aperture attached to one of the knuckles with a regular spigot. Anyway, shaking comes really from the stand column itself and not from the boom so much. So you just start your camera gently or remotely 
and give the rig a few seconds before you start your presentation. It's not a big deal. I have another knuckle on the boom arm as well here. It's fitted with a newer studio reflector holder, which does the job it was designed for, holding my foam core fill reflector, like so. And now I have some fill on the side of my face. The camera is mounted on an Arca Swiss compatible ball head, screwed right onto the end of the quarter 20 thread on the end of the boom arm. That's a $35 head from Newer, and it's really perfect for the job. The cost to quality ratio here is excellent. I try to use the same camera as my main camera, a Nikon Z6, of which I have two. But since I'm using my second Z6 here for the wide view, that's a Nikon D800 up there, uh, which only records in HD 1080p. Ideally, I'd like to have a dedicated overhead camera. <laughs> and I've mentioned this quandary in another video. Perhaps a DX APS-C sensor size camera would suffice, like the Z50, or the newly released Retro Style ZFC that looks remarkably like my vintage FM film camera. More temptation. It certainly looks nice in green or gray. No, no, maybe tan. And though it's not absolutely necessary, I did recently add a monitor. I got by for years without one, but I strongly recommend the investment for an overhead rig. It's really helpful when it comes to focusing the camera. Figure out the depth of field that you need, you choose the appropriate aperture, and then you can manually focus and make sure everything that you want in focus is in focus. And also to check framing during recording. This 7-inch field monitor, the F100, also from Newer, does the job well for around $100 US. On the side, it has inputs and outputs for USB upgrade, OSD on-screen controller, earphone port, AV signal input, and the HDMI input, and input for optional DC power supply, which is not included with this monitor. So far, I've been running it with a Sony-type NPF battery that slots into the compartment on the back. And I've discovered by experience that leaving the battery on the monitor will drain the battery overnight. The menu is fairly straightforward once you get everything set up. The mode button switches between AV and HDMI. I have a 2 meter HDMI cable running between the camera and the, the monitor. The volume control is right here, up, down. The main screen menu controls the picture. And if you find a lot of controls grayed out, make sure it's set to user, and then you can adjust brightness, contrast, etc. Be forewarned. You scroll up and down functions with the F1, F2 buttons. And here's a tip as well from the been there done that department. If you have focus assist on, you can't access any of those functions. Under the gear icon, you have language, aspect ratio, OSD settings, etc. The tools icon accesses a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> That's a technical term. Center marker, save frames, image flip if you mount the monitor or camera upside down, and of course, the handy focus assist, which I access via F4. These can be programmed to your most used functions. F3 is mapped to check field, which you get these different colors. I won't do a full review here. There are already comprehensive tutorials on YouTube, but it has everything you'd need for this use case and more. The IPS display is quite impressive for the price with good peripheral viewing. As far as mounting, that'll depend on the rest of your studio setup, but it has the usual threaded female connector and it comes with a little ball head. You could mount it on a clamp on a stand with a ball head, and I did for a while. But recently, I came across this webcam holder with a G-clamp from KDD, which 
evidently stands for keep durable and distinctive. <laughs> it comes with mounts for phones as well. So if that's what you use for overhead, or it'll support a small DSLR or mirrorless camera. So here's a real budget solution for an overhead rig for under $30 US. Anyway, for this setup, it holds the monitor right where I can see it and frees up the stand for other use. I've replaced the included ball head with a better one. This one, $25 from Strobe Pro. As I said, I did without a proper overhead rig for some time. So this is a very nice setup, I think, especially with the addition of a monitor, which <laughs> has honestly cut down on reshoots. It's great to be able to keep an eye on where my hands and desktop items are located in the frame. And as I mentioned, setting up focus, because I prefer to use manual focus for the overhead camera. No surprises. So that's my overhead camera rig solution. Let me know in the comments if this looks like something that you might use. And if you found this video useful, please give it the old thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do hit that notification bell to be alerted to new content. In the meantime, take care of yourselves, cheers, and we'll see you later.